Good morning. I'm Yanni the Greek coming to you live straight from Las Vegas. It's Monday, July 29th, and we got some Major League Baseball action to get to. Also, Olympics. We don't have anything to fire on yet. In fact, small action, light action so far from the betting syndicates as they start off this new week. We are getting ready for the NFL and college football season. Subscribers expect more of those season win totals. Some of those conference winners, we'll see if we can get some futures as well um, in NFL for you guys. With that said, we're coming off a nice couple of days. In fact, if you look at the Wager Talk screen, we are number one in profit over the last three days, which shows you just how irrelevant the short term is. In fact, if you plan on betting tomorrow, next week, next month, then that don't, don't even look at that. It, it really is meaningless. It's going to do nothing but make you emotional. and misrepresent the facts because you could be running hot in the short term and getting crushed in the long term or getting crushed in the short term and killing it in the long term. So again, the goal is to try to win each and every single day. But unless you are only betting today, then you have to be able to zoom out and look at the big picture. Um, and that's what we do here. Our goal is one goal. We have one goal in mind. Every January 1st, I allocate capital and use it as an investment. Otherwise, I'd be putting my money elsewhere. Um, the sports betting uh, market has been so profitable. I just can't stay away. Just can't stay away. All right. Sorry, they're checking figures. It's Monday morning, so you know how that goes. Everybody's checking a figure from last week. So again, getting back to that, what we're doing is strictly grinding, 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 grinding each and every day. With one goal in mind, turn a profit year in, year out. Increase our return on investment. More importantly, our return on capital. Otherwise, our capital could be elsewhere. So far, so good. Last year, we've increased it by 80%. We've doubled up, tripled up bank rolls in past years. We've turned a profit eight of the last nine years. Where we sit right now, we're about down 20, 25% of starting capital for 2024. So we got some round to make up, but we got five plus months to do it. And the uh, most opportunities with football coming up and all the attention when it's on football, you'll see we'll be, we'll crush MMA. We'll be crushing some NASCAR. We'll be crushing some hockey when it starts at NBA, college basketball. Those other markets are such money makers um, when all the attention is on football. So as much as we like to do damage there, make sure to, uh, be ready to fire elsewhere. That's why acquire outs, acquire outs, acquire outs. If you partnered up with me, that should be your only job to acquire outs and manage risk correctly. You do that, the rest is going to take care of itself like it's done for me and anyone else that's followed the blueprint. Now, with that said, I don't have much action to share today. Here's what I can give you. A uh, premium play that I like a lot. In fact, it would have been a 4% play if there wasn't some recency bias going against us in the starting pitch. And here's what I mean. I love the over in Kansas City and the White Sox. I like over nine. I'm comfortable laying up until minus 120, 125 range to not go to nine and a half. Um, it's been a, a dead under series between these two. So you expect the line be shaded towards that bias of the under. I was hoping that we would have both of these teams coming in with some unders as well, but that just isn't the case. In fact, they're coming off some higher scoring games in their last series. And then you look at the pitching matchup. These guys, both are coming off outings where they let up plenty of runs. Had that not been the case, this would qualify as a 4% play. Would have been the perfect storm. But instead, we're going to take advantage of that nine, which should be nine and a half. And uh, we're going to put a 3% play on that. Of course, we only bet 0.25 because we don't want to work with a 90% risk of ruin. We prefer to work with about a 20% risk of ruin where we know based on my long-term edge, we will dumble our bank at least eight out of 10 times and lose it less than two out of 10 times. Now, I, as I say, I share information with a lot of other movers. That's how we try to confirm uh, legit stuff from manipulation, from middles, from edging off from numbers plays. There's just so much stuff that goes into the sports betting market besides legitimate positions. They got to be careful. Trust me, I move for these guys um, and these groups. I know all the different maneuvers that they do to earn, 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 earn day, all day, all day. They got guys over there scalping. They got guys over there manipulating. They got guys, guys back there looking for off, off numbers, rogue numbers. 
It's just what they do. They're just looking to take advantage of a market that's littered with unsophisticated batters. That's what you take advantage of. That's what you take advantage of. Now, I gave you that White Sox Kansas City over. We like that one a lot. And uh, one of the groups, uh, one of the movers that I share with, he sent me Washington, Arizona over. I passed on that. Didn't release it to subscribers. I just can't get there. I can't get there. I, I, I Listen, if they, these guys are betting it, they're long-term winners. I'm sure they see some plus EV angle there. Um, but I don't blindly piggyback the sports that I handicap myself and have a ton of experience moving on. Um, and something just doesn't sit right. I always trust my intuition. It's, it's been, uh, being built and, uh, growing inside of each and every one of us since we started doing what we're doing. So, uh, yeah, Washington, Arizona over. I passed on that. Just sharing the information, whether you follow fade or ignore. So let's just go with Kansas city and the white Sox over today. Let's go Kansas city, white Sox over. Let me see if anything else did come in that I can share with you. Oh my, look at that new figure, 21,330. I like how that sounds. Okay, let's get to some questions real quickly. All right, my man, Neil, smashing and sharing daily. Yes, sir. Don't know if it's your groups or wager talk, but notice just recently on the baseball premium releases sent by email, the plays are no longer just action plays, but listed pitchers must start. How do we go move going forward? Sorry, I, I, I always list pitchers. It's just force a habit. Um, I, I don't even know. I, I'll look to make sure it's it's clicked off on always list pitchers, but in baseball, I've always listed pitchers. Um, like I said, just from back in the day, it's always been a force of habit. Obviously, when it comes to totals, if an off pitcher goes, then the total doesn't. Um, uh, it's a no no play anyway, so it doesn't matter. But on the sides, um, yeah, I don't like action. I I, I list pitchers. Um, that's just how we've always done it. Uh, I'm not sure why it was coming back through as action beforehand. Um, hopefully that didn't hurt us. Uh, but yeah, make sure you list those pitchers, Neil, because that, the most of the handicap is based on the pitching matchup. Now, not as much as the betting public's handicap is, and that's what we're able to take advantage of because they about 80, 90% of the reasoning why they're betting is on that starting pitching. And there's just more, a lot more factors than that starting pitching the matchup as far as the momentum goes in the series, as far as who's sitting, who's being rested, who's playing. There's just so much when it comes to baseball other than just starting pitching. Um, but you definitely want to list pitchers um, if you're betting steam because that's how the groups do it. That's how I always did it as a runner. They always had me list pitchers. So I just, again, I follow what uh, men smarter than me um, have proven is the way to do it. And I don't try to reinvent the wheel. Again, I've always checked my ego at the door. I've never needed to be the smartest man in the room. I've just made it my my goal in life to, in fact, try to be the stupidest man in every room. That's the only way you're going to learn. Um, I don't like surrounding myself by people that aren't can't teach me. I don't mind, again, being the, the dumbest guy in every room. The mistake is being the smartest guy in every room. You have nothing to learn. You have nothing to learn. I don't have that kind of ego. Thank God. Thank God. All right. All right. Uh, Jenny Arndt, let's go. Thank you for all your help. Thank you. You've provided us with a wealth of knowledge. Maybe I'm overthinking this, but at 20% risk of ruin, that's eight out of 10 years, we will be profitable. And two out of 10 years, we won't, or we may go broke, correct? Since we have been profitable eight of the last nine in this 10th year, does this point to the year not being profitable? No, no. I love how you said that. And yeah, long-term, here's the truth. Here's the truth. By 20% risk of ruin, okay? You have to separate it from the year because with, with a 20% risk of ruin that, that we're betting with, it's a bet size based on our capital, based on our bankroll, on the bankroll overall. So it, it's irrelevant of the year. That's what I want you to, to be able to separate. Now, as far as profitable years go, here's the truth. At, at minus 110, you're probably, if you're winning better over 10 years, you're lucky if you win six and lose four. That's how it should go. It really should. Um, if you're, you know, five and a half winning years, four and a half losing years, you're in the top 1%. If you're six winning years, four losing years, you're in the 
top half percent of those betters. Um, and us, I don't know. I, I don't know whether the credit we've gotten a little lucky having not produced more losing years, or I believe it's a product of betting multiple markets. Meaning if I just did football, let's say I just did college NFL football. I believe I probably would have over 10 years win six, lose four. But I believe it's because I'm able to bet multiple markets, able to infiltrate those smaller markets as well, able to produce such a sample size of wagers in a year that we've been over able to overcome that. That's where why I'm confident we could replicate this over and over and over and over again. It's because of the amount of markets we're able to beat, the amount of volume we're able to fire or else it wouldn't be worth it based on the, the risk management and the, the risk of ruin. What you need to, to understand is you choose that. Unlike how many winning months and losing months you're going to have, you can't decide that. Like what I'm saying is, let's say you, you bet next three years, that's 36 months. Okay. So let's say you're uh, uh, even a, a 60, 40 guy, right? Or 70, 30 guy. What are you going to win out of those 36 months? Let's do a little math. Let's go. Let's go 36 times 60%. So you're going to win 20. If you're a 60% guy, you're going to win 21, 22 of those months. You're going to lose 14 of those months. That's just a 60% guy. That doesn't mean you're going to go six and four every time. Like you could win 14 straight months and then lose seven in a row. It's not going to come six and four, six and four, six and four, six and four, six and four. That's what you got to understand. The law of big numbers will work, but it not in the short term. We're going to go six and four, six and four, six and four, six and four. That's just not going to happen. Unfortunately, I wish it was. Then it would be a lot easier to manage risk. Because you won't go into those long losing streaks, those long winning streaks where you feel you just can't lose and you start over betting or making some mistakes. And so that's the difference. And again, getting back to risk of ruin, risk of ruin is simply based on units. How many units you have in relation to your bankroll. That's it. It, has, it doesn't have to do with winning years and losing years. So I, I hope that yeah, that I'm... Um, Made that straight. If not, Jenny Art, please tomorrow ask me to go into detail and I'll break it down. I'll bring the chart. This is the risk of ruin. If you want a 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, 50% risk of ruin. And then this is, you know, at minus 110, what kind of winning years you expect. Maybe I should do it that way, make it a little easier. Don't want to confuse you guys. Um, all right. Last but not least, <clears throat> I, I can't answer them all. You got my neck. We could talk for hours if you want. All right. Richie, homie, my man, you're the man. No, sir, you are. Can you explain how much points are worth in the NFL? If I see a three and a half, knowing three is a key number, how much should I pay to lay on the three? Great, 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 great question. All right. Here's the bottom line. Buying uh, a half a points differ from number to number to number to number based on how important the number is. All right. Most sports books know, obviously, all sports books know exactly what a half point is worth. And what they do is they overcharge you for it. So meaning if you're going to buy a half a point on a number and you lay 10 cents for it, so you're laying, you lay minus 110 to win 100, you buy a half a point. So now you're allowed to lay minus 120 to win 100. Nine times out of 10, that half a point that they're selling you for 10 cents is only worth about five to six, seven cents to you. So they're getting the best of it, not you by the half a point. There's very few times that you'll buy the half a point and you're getting the best of it where you're only adding, paying an extra 10 cents and you should be paying 12, 13. And during NFL and college football, even NBA, college basketball, my subscribers, remember, I add that in to the description. Instead of wasting time on bullshit analysis, I'll share knowledge like that. Well, I'll let them know by the half a point up to minus 122. And I know it only costs them minus 120. So they could know that they are getting the best of it. They should be laying minus 122. They're only being asked to lay minus 120. That's why I'm buying the half a point on this, you know, number, this arbitrary number. And I'll buy them on points. Sometimes I do it in basketball. People are like, why did you buy that half a point on a number like 11, 10, nine and a half? Because it should be worth 11 cents. And I'm only being charged 10. 
Anytime I get a discount on a half, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy it. That's just what I do. I look to get the best of it. So I buy it on any half point that I know I should be paying more for. I'll never buy it if, if, if I have to pay more than it's worth. If it's even, sometimes I'll buy it. Meaning it costs 10 cents. I'll pay 10 cents. It's fair, fair half point. Um, first example, from your three and a half to three, it should cost you an extra 25 cents at the most. That's it. So if you have a minus three and a half, to go to minus three, so let's say you got minus three and a half at minus 110. If you could get it to minus three at minus 135, it's equal. So if you're laying minus three, minus 130, it's a better bet than three and a half minus 110. If you're laying minus three, minus 125, it's a better bet than three and a half minus 110. But if your bookmaker is charging you minus 131, 132, 135 to go to minus three, you no longer have minus three. You have three and a half, whether you know it or not. That's the difference. The only the, where they're charging you it is on the VIG instead of the point. See, that's where they're 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 sneaking it through. Remember, we could we could uh, transform every point spread into a money line. Every point spread is a money line. So all they have to do is jack up that money line and not jack up the point spread, and the inefficiency to the better is right there. And that's exactly what happens. So they let you buy the half a point but they make you pay 30 cents instead of 25, 35 cents and less the 25. So you think, Hey, I got minus three. No, you don't. No, you don't. At anything higher than minus 135, you don't because you're now paying three and a half prices. So keep that in mind. There's nothing more important. How about this? How about this? Like, do you take minus three and a half at minus 110? Or do you take minus four at minus 105? These are the nuances that make all the difference when it comes to betting football. All the difference. All the difference. And see, what you would take there is you wouldn't take the four at minus 105. You would take the three and a half at minus 110. Because four minus 105 equals minus three and a half minus 111, not 110. So it's that extra penny on the dollar that we have in the best of it, why we would take that three and a half and not the four. This is so key in college and NFL. This is one of the big reasons over the last 365, number one in NFL and college football. If you combine the two, number one in profit, NFL and college football. And I believe most of that, and clearly in college football last year, destroyed it, comes in knowing those key numbers and when the buy, when not the buy, when the pass completely, that is so key. So that's how excited I am for this year's college football and NFL. I'm hoping we could have a, a good second half of baseball still. We keep chipping away at what we're down. So we end up destroying NFL and college football like last year. And uh, when the dust settles December 31st, make sure you swing by. We may be having a party. So. Enjoy the games. Let's have a good week. Let's do some damage. Got a steam room coming as well. Got a busy week ahead. Guys, have a great day. Enjoy the game.